Hello, everyone. So I would like to welcome you in this series of, of video that covers the chapters from CBSU board. Okay, so the book is written by Sumit Arora and I'm talking about computer science with Python. Okay, so in this book, uh, there are various series for different different chapters. So this video is related to chapter number four, that is conditional and iterative statements. So I hope you will get some ideas about this chapter and will enjoy the video. Okay, so let's start the chapter. So at first, uh, I would like to uh, explain that, what do you understand by statements, okay? So statements are something that makes some changes in your program, okay? Or, or let us say that makes some action. Okay, so suppose here is one program written by me to just to check the category of uh, depending upon the marks provided by the user. Okay, so here there are multiple statements, different line of statements. So the very first one, this mark equals to float input into your mark. So this statement is considered as simple or single statement. So see this statement is a single statement it doesn't have any other nested statements okay so this statement is a single statement and thus it is also known as simple statement okay and the other type of statement is compound statement so as the name suggests compound means statement that contains another statements Okay, so in this case, in line number two, if mark is less than zero or mark is greater than 100, then this column means it is a block. Okay, this column means it is a block. So after that, this block consists of another one more statement that is print this part. Okay, so that if condition statement consists of this part. Okay, so such statements are known as uh, compound statements. So if one statement consists another statement inside its body or inside its block is known as compound statement or any more than one statements that have uh, correlation among them are known as compound statements. Okay. And one simple, another statement, another type of statement is there. It's called empty statement. There we simply write with this pass keyword and it simply represents a uh, empty statement in python nothing else okay so it does nothing in python it is it simply represents that it is an empty statement that's it okay it doesn't play any role in python it's, it is just used to indicate the empty statement that's it so this was all about uh, different types of statements one is a uh, empty statement which is written by a uh, keyword such as pass only this okay this is a keyword and after that, there is a mm, single statement or simple statement. As I mentioned earlier, see here, it's a single statement. Then why? Because it doesn't have any further statements related to it. Okay. So that's why it's a single statement. And in second line, if we can see this, if statement has another statement belonging to it. Okay. So that's why such statements are known as compound statements. Similarly goes for elif also. So this part is also a compound statement. This elif constitutes of these two more statement that is two more print statements. So this is another example of compound statements. Okay, so as a whole, if elif and else all are known as compound statements. Or one more way to represent compound statements is uh, suppose if we are defining a function, okay, let us say my fun, then here also, uh, if I happen to print anything like uh, hello, suppose, okay, then I'll call the function over here. Then uh, this part is also known as 
compound function. So compound which function, sorry, compound statement basically uh, represents that if one uh, statement has or one statement constitutes another statements along with it, then such statements are known as compound statements. Okay. So that's all about statements, types of statements in Python. Now we'll be discussing about flow or control of statements depending upon the types. Okay, there are two types of control flow in Python or any maybe in another programming languages. One is sequential and the other is selective control flow. So control flow means how does your program control moves from one line to another? Okay, so here in this case, say from mark line number one, mark float input into your mark. So here, after this first line gets executed, it moves to next line, line number two. Till here, it's a sequential type. But after line number two, what happens if you input the input value matches to condition, true condition over here, then your control will move to line three. Then after that, your control will suddenly move to the end of this statement. That is, it will control will be float or move to this line number 16. Okay, so such type of statements or sorry, this type of flow are known as selective flow. In selective flow, what happens? Your control moves from one location to another location according to the selection process. Okay, so if con true condition happens to occur in this if part, then what happens? It simply ignores elif and else part in a program. Okay, then it will, the control will be transferred or the control will move after that else part that is line number 16 in my case in this program okay so this type of control or flow is known as selective flow and if your flow is like in sequential order suppose let me take another example suppose let us say a equals to 10 then b equals to 20 then c is equals to a plus b okay then i will simply try to print the value of a plus b on c that is stored in c okay so here what what's happening is simply line by line your code is being executed so a equals to 10 okay here the value of 10 is assigned to E and after that, see, after that, your controller moves to line, next line, sequentially. Then again in next line, sequentially, finally the last line, okay. Here your controller is not moving on the basis of selection, like from line number 26 to direct line number 29 or line number 13. Here your controller is moving line by line in a sequence. So such type of flow control is known as sequential flow control. Okay, so this is how your control moves in a programming language. Okay, in two bases. One is in sequential and the other is uh, selection. Clear? And uh, now we'll be discussing about conditional statements. Okay. So as a name suggests, conditional means there might be some conditions, there must be some conditions in a program. So where we use conditional statements. So in this program only, uh, the conditional statement is represented by if, elif or else. Right? It's complete block, it's complete combination can be considered as a conditional statement. Okay, basically if statement is used to uh, represent a conditional statement. Why? If a statement accommodates certain conditions, okay, see here in our case, in this program also, if and after that mark is less than zero or mark greater than zero. That means here, the mark is an input, 
or the data that is received from user and data that has been received is checked with these two conditions whether that data is less than zero that is negative value or that data is greater than 100 that is more than 100 yes so the standard format for mark is from zero to 100 only so we no one can get negative marks or no one can get more than 100 marks in a subject right the standard uh, type is from zero to 100 only so that's why i am making this condition over here in order to display a result that if a user happens to enter marks in negative or greater than 100 then the message will be shown to them as a the enter mark is invalid right so marks in case of marks the range must be from 0 to 100 only so accordingly the message will be displayed if the user dis enters negative or above 100 points marks okay so here we got a condition two conditions so in every statement that of uh, if there will be a condition see here in if so if this if part happens to be false that, that means if both the condition doesn't meet the input value over here then what happens the controller will directly move from this line number two to line number four okay why because line number three won't be executed if this is this acts like a door if you don't have a key you will be locked out of the door right you will be locked out of the door similarly in this case also what happens if none of this condition matches okay in, then what happens this if will not allow this its belonging statement to be executed so that's why controller will move from line number two to directly line number four so here also l if l means else and if so if this first if is not correct then it will move to um, conjugative another conditional part that is l if if it is a multiple type of statements multiple conditional statements okay so see from here your controller won't be moving directly to seven it will move to another uh, conditional statement that is lf part okay so here again it will check if your marks lies between this 45 to 60 and it will find true then what happens it will simply execute this statements suppose let me run this program then 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 wait there might be some error so in case of else part before this else okay i will just correct that okay i'll write 45 say the condition is true for this part why because the input value lies in between this range 45 okay and it is also less than 60 that's why this part is executing so since the, it meets the condition it allows the controller to move to this line number five it will execute this second division then again in line number six that is congratulations so after executing this what happens your controller will move directly to line number 15 why now matching this conditions other conditions are simply ignored okay once your marks has been changed the rest of other conditional statements will be ignored that's the reason this part is not executed so this approach uh, happens if you compare with some common variables or common entities so here you are uh, using multiple statements with common entity that is mark suppose here if instead of mark some other variable was there then it was there was there might have been a different scenario okay so for now simple understanding uh, just for one only one entity that is one variable we are checking with this multiple statements that's why after meeting a true condition in this line number four what happens it will execute its whole body part then after that controller would directly move uh, ignoring the rest of conditional parts or and uh, along with this else also see this else is always considered as an alternative option in case of conditions 
if any of the above this elif or if statement doesn't match any true conditions then in that case only the alternative or um, option will be to be execute the else part okay so the else part is just an alternative options during the conditional statements if we don't write this else part also nothing's going to happen it doesn't make any effect but simply like if we don't have uh, like suppose let's say if we don't have a pain then we can't write anything on a paper yes or no or let us say um, if you don't have a pain then we can simply write with a pencil the alternative option might be a pencil right so similarly in this case also if any of this above condition doesn't make true meet true condition then ultimately at last the alternative option might be the else part so that's it okay so this is how if elif else condition statements are used in python okay condition statements constitute of these parts and there might be a nested uh, conditions also so we'll be discussing about nested conditions in later series or later videos okay so for now only the simplest form of type of statements and the conditional statements in this video i hope uh, you'll get you got some ideas uh, i would like you to practice this programs okay and if you if you have any problem any confusions or any questions uh, i would like to you to feel free uh, to give some comments on the comment section below so that i can help you out okay so thank you for watching video thank you so much